Oh, hey, I'm Coco, and welcome to our talk show, Single and Too Tired to Mingle. We'll be talking about relationships with ourselves, our exes, our kids, and other important beings. So stay tuned. Dr. Byron Cole, yes, <laughs> how are you doing today? Life is incredible. Amazing. Thank you so much for dropping by on Thank Tuesday you Talks. Me. Thank you for having me. So you are a serial entrepreneur, yes. an award-winning entrepreneur and author, actually. Yes. You own or you kind of run an entrepreneurship network. Yes. And your brand new dad. Yes. So congratulations. Fun time. Thank you so How's much. How's the baby? Oh, he's incredible. He's, he's, he's incredible. I love nice him. and quiet so far? So far, so good, you know. Okay. Yeah, every now and then he has a little bit of a, a little bit of a, a whine. Okay, but he just uh, wants you to know that he's there. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Like he's, he's 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 gorgeous as well. So yeah, oh, I'm sure everybody me. says that about it. For, for sure. But, uh, <laughs> but yeah, no, life is great, honestly. Awesome. Um, so being an entrepreneur. Yes. So tell me about kind of how you started out. Yeah. Where were your roots? Because you yeah. started out quite young. Yes. So tell me about that that journey from the beginning. Absolutely. So I grew up in Northwest London. Okay. Um, I there I went to local school, failed my GCSEs. Um, I grew up in a, a, one of Europe's largest council estates. I moved to South East London. I always say from the frying pan to the fire. Right. Uh, <laughs> but to talk about that entrepreneurial journey, I always had that in me. When I was in school, I would buy and sell sweets in college, it was CDs and clothes. In university, I was buying and selling cars. I studied business economics. Mm. And I always had that entrepreneurial flair in me. And that got, led me to property. You know, everyone's obsessed with property in mm. the UK, especially even though it's so heavily taxed. And it's such but, a uh, weird market as well. It's like it's much more difficult than Europe, for example. It's what I always just say, the thing with property is it's been a great source of income for me over the years. Okay. But it's also, and becoming even more so, uh, an easy way to tax people. Right. Property. Mm-hmm. Um, but it's still great income, but you've just got to be so careful now, otherwise you just end up with less than you think you're going to have. Uh, so I got into property very young, um, I started brokering property deals very, very young. Bought my first property at the age of 21. I always laugh about it. Now. How did you do that? <laughs> so I was literally brokering so many property deals. Right. Saving up. and it was, How did you get that idea, though? Was, like uh, a 21-year-old was, just doesn't was, go and broker property deals. I, I right? was obsessed with a show called Homes Under the Hammer. Right. And I would go to the auction houses. And I had no business being there, as you've, for those of you who heard my story before. Mm. And I would go there and I would just sit there and I would see Coco bidding on the property and I was going through the cat first thing was a research kind of okay. thing so I was like okay what price do they sell for yeah versus the guide price because the guide right. price is always juicy yeah it's always reels you in yeah and you're like yeah, yeah. you can get this house for five thousand pounds or whatever it may have been and then I was recognizing there was an uplift I don't remember the percentage mm-hmm. but let's call it 31 percent and then you're like okay cool so this is what they all go for then I was like going to the property itself that were local to my house and I was going there like I had any business going there and I was like mm. <laughs> You know, this is how... So have you had any money until then? I, or? I had a small amount of money, but not enough to really get in the market. Okay. Then I spoke to some investors and they that was on site at the auction house. And I was like, oh, you just bought this unit. Uh, if you do this to it and do that to it, you're going to be able to make this amount. They're looking at me like, well, who's this kid? Look at me. <laughs> and they said, do I know anybody that will buy these properties? And I was like, no. So then I was like, because obviously my network was trash there, yeah. not what it is now. And then I said, oh, I'm going to just go and find people to buy this property. So mm-hmm. I went and started hanging out in the Waldorf Lanes, Ray Hilton, all these fine luxury hotels, because that's where I thought you find people with money. And I would, just, I, I would just talk to anybody that looked like they had money. And then I was profiling them as if I was robbing them. But I was profiling <laughs> them. I was like, yeah, they said, oh, she's wearing a Birkin. She's wearing, that guy's wearing a Rolex. And I would just talk to them. Mm. Like, one of the good things about property, especially in the UK, is it's relatively secure. By the time you get your solicitor involved, the convincing process means that you're mitigating risk. So even if I had, if I, I couldn't sell something I didn't have. Yeah. Right. So there was very little risk. So that was a good thing. Okay. So if I was offering, when I was offering people, hey, I've got a property that I can give you 20% discount on from market value. And they're like, okay. So anyway, I was making money brokering property deals yeah, cool. and uh, I made some money. That's when I bought my first property. And the days, those days were great. You know, it was different to what it is now. You know, 95% mortgages, 90% mortgages were easy. And obviously, I bought the property like 138 grand. You're like, right. it's not that much money, you know, 5 and 10%. Yeah. So, um, it's so like, you're in at a good like, time. I was so in a, a, a good an time. easier time. Right. Okay. Um, to what it is now. And uh, unfortunately, I sold that property. But if I look back now, it's 3x 
easy. Okay. Yeah. So fun times. So that's okay. how I got into property. Uh, then went into an estate agency business, which actually failed. Yeah. Let's talk uh, about that. Yeah. So it's always good to hear about people, you know, making it big and making it happen. But yeah. life doesn't just go up. Absolutely. So it goes down and then yeah, up. Yeah. So what happened with your failure and how did you yeah. get yourself out of that and succeed? Yeah. Do you know what? When I invested in that business, um, it was because I just loved the industry. It was blind. Right. Pain, almost. They were like, one of my clients was like, Brian, do you want to invest in property? Uh, in my estate agency. I was like, yeah, of course. <laughs> Here's all my money. And then I was like, I left university to go and work in this business right. because I can recognize my, my, it wasn't, I wasn't getting the returns I was promised. And then um, it was really hard. And then we had the credit crunch. Yeah. Like 2009, uh, 2008. Yeah, 2008. And it was, um, it was hard and it was such a challenge. It was unlike anything I've seen since, whereby every mortgage offer we had on property, because I was brokering, remember I had a brokering background. So I was helping people as well, getting the finance with my mortgage broker, with our mortgage broker. I was doing the whole thing. Right. Sales progressing, sales manager, letting ma every manager. And they pulled all deals overnight, every bank. It was wow. just insane. It was a car crash. Can you imagine you've got a pipeline of whatever mm. and every deal is wiped out? Wow. And that was just like, wow. And then that with a few other things, I was I didn't qualify my purchase really when I when I put my money in. Right. Um, and then uh, my business partner at the time was trying to find an exit. And essentially that business failed. And uh, I was like, what am I going to do? You know, and it was tough. It was tough, but I, I wasn't really at the time. I wasn't really that like. Oh my God. Yeah, Is it the benefit of being super young and just going for it and not thinking too much? I think I still have the same attitude, okay. to be fair. Um, what can I do? You know, you gotta, you got to move on. Yeah. So, and I'm quite proactive and I'm quite a solutions-based person. Okay. So it was like, okay, well, what can I do? Okay, we're going to park that for yeah. a minute. <laughs> so, um, so tell me a yeah. little bit. Okay, you grew up on council estate. Yeah, talk to me. Um, and then you were becoming more and more affluent. So how did that affect your friends, I guess, that you had there? Yeah. Um, so do you still have old friends or is it purely yeah, a yeah. new friends? I have a mixture. You have a mixture? Yeah, really great question. Uh, I would say um, I have a good mixture. Okay. I remember when um, I bought my first property and my friend had the same opportunity to buy at the time. And we were selling clothes on eBay and all this stuff. We had some disposable income, both right. of us. And I was like, I'm going to buy this property. You should also buy a property as well. And he remember him saying to me, because we know when you get the you get your mortgage offer and it says, well, actually, before the mortgage offer, it was it's like a know your customer. It's like a, a doc, I don't remember the exact name of the document, but it tells you how much you're going to borrow. Yeah, and how, and how much, much you're going to overpay. And then, and then he was like, why would you do that? Blah, blah, blah. Mm. And now when I look back at that 20 plus years later, he's yet to enter the property market. You know, look at the uplift that I've had on that. And even if he entered in on that now, he can he would have generated half. If he entered at that point, it would have put maybe 10 grand, 20 grand, whatever. Mm. He would have half a million pounds now. Right. And still seeking to get in the property market. So you guys are still friends? Um, I would say at the moment we are still, we're friends, but we're not as connected as we once mm. were because we don't share the same. Yeah, correct. I tend to hang out with people that I share similar goals and mindset with, typically speaking. Mm. And that commonality or commonality yeah, you know, like yeah, what's yeah. your common? What do you both share? Sure, right. So it's like some of my friends, we just watch football together. Right, they're my friends. We just hang out and watch football together <laughs> and talk about nothing else but football. Some of my friends, we hang out and we talk about nothing else but business and entrepreneurship. So it varies depending on that, um, depending on your group of friendships. So I do have both the mm. the old friends and the new friends, um, and I manage those relationships accordingly. So yeah, okay. So we're just going to talk about your wife briefly, yes. Bianca. <laughs> talk about the superstar. That's it. So you yeah, guys are yeah. in business together. Yes. Do you share all your businesses or no. you have some together, some apart? Yes, yeah, so we have some together and some separate. So right. for those, for the audience who don't know Bianca. Yeah, let's Bianca introduce her. Uh, she, she also is a, an award-winning entrepreneur. She speaks about personal branding internationally. 
uh, speaks for the who's who, Facebook, Google, Accenture, PwC, EY, all the largest FTSE 100 brands and also other brands uh, and kind of smaller businesses as well about the topic of personal branding. Mm. I um, love you guys as a power couple. I oh, think you guys you. are awesome. <laughs> and I get to negotiate many of her speaking arrangements yeah, okay. and gigs around the world, uh, which is absolutely incredible. Yeah, I love the synergy. Um, How did you guys meet? We met on a yacht or boat on the Thames. On the Thames. <laughs> <laughs> Quite fitting, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, it was uh, 20 years ago or whatever it was. No, it was 16 years ago. Okay, because this uh, podcast is also about personal relationships. Yeah, let's go. So we want to know. Yeah, so we met on a boat and there's conflicting stories as to how, okay. how uh, we were um, connected. Okay. And uh, 16 years later, we are married and a child. And uh, so, yeah, living our best lives, been traveling the world. We want to know the details, though, Byron. How did yeah, you meet? Uh, yeah, we met, we met on a boat. <laughs> but, like, did you see her? Did well, this, she this see you? Well, uh, like, I, I say, she, you know, she, if you know Bianca, for those who know, she's a very determined and, and, and driven woman. And I my my philosophy is she saw what she wanted and she came and got it. Okay. And her philosophy was I did the same to her. So only God knows the truth. Love it. <laughs> so, uh, so, yeah. So that's how we met. We met on a boat. And okay. The rest, the rest is history. Yeah. So... What I also want to know, and this is something that um, I think you guys spoke on one of your podcasts about, mm. is obviously you are an established businessman mm -hmm. and a character. Yeah. And likewise, so, so is she. Yes. So how, like, for example, I think that men often struggle with powerful women, yeah. maybe sometimes even more successful yeah. than, you know, they are. Yeah. So how do you manage that? Great question. And first of all... <laughs> Um, when she was on uh, the BBC Apprentice mm. in 2014, she came out and she was this, you know, uh, public figure. Correct. Yeah. And it's really interesting because when you go to events together as a couple, it's like people don't see you. Mm. It's incredible. Mm. It's so bizarre. So I didn't have a personal brand then. I wasn't um, Mr. V self-made. Yeah. I was an entrepreneur doing my thing on in, in the side. And only perhaps maybe seven years ago or so, I got into the, more about, you know, building my own brand and building my own social media following and so on and so forth. So it's interesting. Then it was her in the limelight doing things publicly. Right. And now it's balanced. And it depends on the environment that we go to mm -hmm. because it might be, hey, oh, you're pissed to be self-made. I love your stuff. Oh yeah, I follow you as well. Actually, that, yeah, yeah. Whereas before, so how is just, she taking that? So, it, so it, it's completely a youth, and it depends on where we go. Yeah, yeah, it, yeah. It's both ways. It goes both ways. And before, it was like people were borderline rude, like to yourself. How can you? Yeah, because yeah. it's like, how can you walk into a room with two people and you only greet one person? Yeah, it's insane, right? Mm. Like the way I hate the way, and this happens all the time. So, how did that make you feel? Do you know, I was right. Like we, we were there for commercial reasons most yeah. of the time. I really didn't care. Um, so, I mean, I'm perfectly okay, like empowering her, putting her forward, uh, showcasing her. I'm okay with it. Some people have said to me, maybe it's because you know that you've, you've got, you can make money or you've got the ability, you've got money, whatever it may be. I don't know, you know, but, um, listen, I'm okay. If I got to stop it all tomorrow and let her be the one, she can go and do all the work, be the superstar, be the, mm. I really don't care. Um, but I can understand how it can be intimidating for either sex, potentially, mm. and maybe more so for men, um, when you've got this rock star powerhouse. And if you're, if, you know, I think the only time it really comes into play is if you haven't got everything in order, if you haven't got your house in order. You're saying as a, as a, man, as a man, yeah. Then it might be like, it might be a bit intimidating if you haven't got your house in order. But if your house is in order, you know, but sometimes she's just the she's just the breadwinner. If she, if if your partner's the breadwinner, actually, I don't know about that. Actually, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I have to. Do I get an allowance? Hang on. Do I get an allowance? I don't know. I think I need to invite her in and yeah, hear yeah, yeah. her side of the story. I need an allowance, maybe. Like no, 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 no. I don't know. Pocket money. Want, no, an allowance. An I need allowance. my monthly allowance. But in this position of life, if she said to me that I need to stay home and look after the kid all day, every day, and she goes to work, I may strongly consider it. If she can bring the numbers in. <laughs> I'll stay at home, 
Maybe. Who knows? Okay, I, need I don't to, know. I need to send her the interview so she can see yeah, her yeah, options. Yeah, yeah, ask her. Now she's like, you better go to work. She's living like a rock star. She's, <laughs> yeah. a, she's out now living like a rock star, enjoying herself. Yeah, good for her. Know? Good for her. Girl okay. power. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I mean, it's, it's very individual, babe. Yeah. Um, but I think you made a good point. Like, if your house is in order, you shouldn't be too worried about someone, yeah. someone else. Yeah. Versus if you're not feeling secure yourself. Yeah. Then it might be an issue. But Mm. if if it's not in order, then I can imagine. That is like, yeah, it's a lot. Yeah, it's good. It's good to see a power couple. I love it. Really good. Thank you. So let's talk about your businesses again. Yeah. Um, So how, okay, you run multiple businesses, right? So, for example, you own a Bentley, which can't be that good for your bank balance. Yes. Right? In theory. (laughs) So how do you make things like that? Yeah. How do you capitalize on these things? Yeah, so I own a number of luxury cars. And how how I originally got in the market was by having a chauffeur business. Right. Which people, I I don't promote or publicize um, due to various reasons. But um, when I originally got in the market, it was a marketing tool for me. Right. So let's rewind. Yeah. First of all, I was like, I want to drive luxury cars and not pay for the pleasure. Perfect. Okay? Yeah. So I was like, I'm going to have myself a chauffeur business. Okay. Fantastic. Then I realized and recognized that I can get into rooms because of the cars that I drive and get in contact with people and offer them the cars because of the cars that I drive. And I can just offer them a chauffeur. Your athletes, your musicians, your influencers. Right. So now I was like, okay. And they were like, we're going to promote you and so on and so forth. I said, I don't want any promotion. But when I need a favor, just owe me a favor. So then I was able to leverage other things I was doing, a book or whatever it may be, and say, hey, I just launched my book. Do you mind if I send you a copy and you promote it on your platforms? And they were like, yeah, great. And that had more value to me right. than the cars, right? So the cars kind of watched this phase. It paid for itself. I exited part of the company as well. I had a rental arm of the company. I sold that part of the company, which was great. Uh, and I'm just on the way out of an exit now anyway. So the cars, I try not to do anything. When the phone rings in the office for cars, I tell them, don't don't turn any cars out. Just don't do it. And I know I'm supposed to be more proactive now and actually sell the other assets. Mm. But I'm like, I'm trying to do this exit and just give it to somebody else, make somebody else's problem at the moment. Because I have no interest in it. Right. Uh, it makes a little bit of money, but... It's, it's pointless for me. For me, it's more about the relationship. But now I'm done. I've, I've developed all the relationships that I wanted. Right. I've got all the contacts that I wanted. Okay. So now it's just nice to drive those luxury cars. So that's how it originally started. And I don't really talk, you'll never really see on my page me talking mm-hmm. about uh, the chauffeur businesses that I've had or exited because the, there's always a place and platform for each individual business. Mm-hmm. And I don't find that a fitting part of my page. Mm-hmm. But we have our own social media page for that business. Yeah. As an okay. example. Okay. Yeah. Okay, it's interesting that you were saying that you had a car and then essentially they owed you a favor. Yeah. And I've often heard you say you have to pay to play sometimes. Mm. What does that mean? Yeah, sometimes, you, like even like you've got to pay to be in the room sometimes, you know? So people say, oh, how do I get in the room? Well, well they have an event that you can pay to be at. Mm. So pay to play, like sometimes you've got to pay for someone to be in their presence or to attend their event or for them to help you, whatever it may be. You got to pay to be involved or to play. You know, sometimes you just got to gift somebody something. Mm. You know, sometimes some relationships that I've had, I've had a fantastic time. I remember uh, one particular couple. I had a fantastic time at one of their events, and I was just so grateful that I was able to experience this event. I sent them like a hamper. Didn't think nothing of it, mm. and uh, you know, we just developed a, a loose relationship from there. And then as time goes on. They remember you, okay. Mm. And then you develop a genuine friendship, genuine bond, or whatever it may be. So you have to pay to play. People are like, oh, I can't get in the room. Well, what are you doing to pay to play? Mm. And sometimes it's not a big gesture. Yeah. Christmas is coming, send them a card. Like, you've got to put your money away. If you're serious and you're committed, mm. do it. Someone just launched a new book. Cool. Brian, I want to I want to buy 10 copies of your book. Cool. Uh, are you okay to sign it? Yeah, now we're connected. Now we're communicating. Cool, Brian, I've got a podcast I would love for you to be on. This is our relationship. So you have to pay to play, to be involved. Do not just sit there and think it's going to land at your desk, at your feet. Get involved. Put your money where your mouth is. That's it. You know? So whether that's mentoring or whatever it may be, pay for someone to have a car for their event, whatever. Like I've used as an example, I have two season tickets at the Emirates. Right. And I use that when I've been here. 
sometimes I'm obviously I've been half and half in Dubai. Yeah. Um, I've used that as a strategy to meet people. So I've just said, hey, I've got a spare ticket for this match. Would love for you to join me. Do you know how the feedback has been incredible? And these seats are not no front row seats. Right? <laughs> They're up in the gods. <laughs> right. But that's my seat. And people are like, yeah, sure. And now you just develop that bond. You might not be able to talk as much business as what you want to, but you're connected now. Now that was the follow up. Should we go for a drink after the match? Should we go for dinner? Should we? Oh, let's catch up again. Whatever it may be. So you got to pay to play. And that's, in, that's insignificant mm. for someone you want to do business with. Yeah, correct. It's going to be £60, £70, £80 cost. It's nothing, right? Compared to what they can do for you and your business and whatever else. So, yeah. Yeah, so the entrepreneurs that you'll mentor hopefully know all this. Of course. Hopefully. Um, <laughs> and I give them the information. But sometimes, <laughs> yeah, that's you know, it. Your homeworks are sometimes... Uh, it's a lot, right? Quite a lot, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The homeworks <laughs> a lot. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so talk us we, let's touch on uh, entrepreneurship mm. and your network yeah. but tell us first um, how did you receive your honorary PhD yes it's an amazing story so, thank you so much so I studied at the University of Greenwich I got my degree at Greenwich and uh, I've always been connected with the university and um, mentoring and various other it's things it's a stunning and, university actually. yeah great yeah. uni and then I became a board member or the chair um, well, I was a board member. Then I moved to chair uh, of this thing called Enterprise, which is uh, essentially it supports entrepreneurs to get their idea right through to, you know, fruition. Um, we were working with a number of partners and so on and so forth. And we was doing a great job and we was doing great for the university. And I've always been connected, but they recognize not just my role within the university. And like, if they need mentors, I'll get them 20 mentors, 30 mentors. So like, I've got a great network. But not just that, but obviously my services to business, my services to entrepreneurship, my services in terms of philanthropy uh, was recognized. And um, they they said they I got this email. You know, sometimes you're just not expecting something. Mm. And um, I always had that. I always wanted one. I was like, right. I, don't, I don't want to study for it. Yeah. There is more than one route to get to the same result. And I didn't Takes want to study while. for it. Yeah. So... I got the email and I was like, I remember I was in Abu Dhabi right. at the time. And uh, I was like, oh my gosh. It was like, couldn't believe it. Uh, incredible day. We went and got the graduation. We graduated, went to the grad. Well, here's the thing. When I went to the graduation, everyone was wearing the gowns, the yellow gowns and stuff. Like that. So I thought we were all graduating with an honorary degree right i didn't realize that was all the staff and faculty and all the oh i see so you thought there were actually other yeah it was just me yeah. oh no way yeah. oh how cool i was like oh my god that is crazy Amazing. so just me and i gave this speech and then everybody else they were like come on get out we want to go and get our, our i was stopping them from getting their their certificates but yeah anyway it was fun um, but yeah, that's how I got my my honorary Amazing. degree. Congratulations! And uh, thank you so much. And uh, yeah, I mean, some people study for it, and good for you. And some people do things yeah. in their relative fields, and good for them. Amazing. And there's just two different ways to yeah. to achieve the goal. So good. Yeah. So tell us about the network that you have for entrepreneurs. Yeah. So we have something called the Rich Forever Network, mm. and what we have is, I always say, you know, in terms of uh, entrepreneurship, you have to uh, learn. You know. Uh, you have to first learn and then you earn, right? Right. And I recognize that not everybody can afford my fee and or Bianca's fee as business mentors. Right. So there was this whole market of people that were unable to access us. So I said, okay, how can we help them? I said, well, I'm going to commit, create a community called the Rich Forever Community, Rich Forever Network. And the, the, the premise is we bring in industry experts that are helping me and Bianca and our businesses grow, bring them in to teach them something. Right. Number one. Number one, I love number two, I love networking. So yeah. <laughs> it's all about networking, meeting new people. I teach networking. So I'm like, we want to also have a networking event. Now the two foundations. It's now grown into much more than that. And I said, I want to just make it cheap as chips. It's eight pounds. Cheaper than Netflix. <laughs> eight pounds, you're in. And more effective. There's, yeah, and more effective. <laughs> And there's no excuses. Yeah. Eight pounds. Yeah, that's what are you it. spending eight pounds on in yeah. a month? Yeah, that's it. So we built this community. We are now on uh, about 400 odd people, 400 odd members, uh, maybe just short of 300 in our kind of Telegram community. 
and uh, it's growing and I'm loving it and um, getting to speak to people and new people all the time. So it's good. It's nice. It's not as it's different from the mentoring because the mentoring is us training and delivering. Mm -hmm. The Rich Forever Network is others training and delivering. Right. So you wouldn't be able to afford to pay certain people to come and teach on the network or to teach you personally, but we can collectively go and get them right. to teach you. Okay. So and then we record the sessions. You can watch it at any time, and it's it's a, it's a great resource. Yeah, it's great. It's massive so, yeah. as well. Yeah. So when you speak to all these entrepreneurs, mm. um, can you tell straight up who's going to make it and who's going to go in for the long slog and perhaps not be successful in the end? Mm, great question. Uh, I I think the answer is no. Mm. Yeah, I think people surprise you. Mm -hmm. The ones who you think are going to do really well um, fall off. Sometimes life just happens. Right. Things happen in your life. Mm. Life begins life. Um, and then some people are just, and and more so, I've noticed that in our speakers academy, because um, it's a much smaller group of people that are being managed by us, and we're seeing people getting paid ten k for their talks, ten thousand dollars. Last week we had someone nice. coming in at ten thousand dollars, two and a half thousand dollars for their talk, two and a half, two and a half thousand pounds. Uh, I've gone from dollars to pounds. <laughs> That's the, okay. The offer was in dollars. <laughs> yeah. Last week's one, and everybody else talks in pounds. Um, so you can't tell. I would say it is very difficult to know, but you get an inkling after a while of seeing people and speaking mm. to people. You're like, yeah, that person's gonna do well because you can see they're hungry. They always show up. Even even if we look at I've, one of the businesses you might not have on there is I have a, a community interest group called the Urban Entrepreneurs, right? right? And it supports young people essentially, right, to become entrepreneurs or get into their career. And we had some lottery funding and blah, blah, blah. Okay. And there was one lady that was always present, always asked a question, always sharp. You may now know her. Her name's Jada. Oh, yeah, I do. <laughs> she, she came through that program. Okay. So I knew she was sharp right. from day one because she always showed up, always present, always listened, always mm -hmm. had a question. And I was like, this girl's sh sharp. Never thought anything about it. And now she works for the company. Yeah, she's right? amazing. Very sweet. So yeah. very good girl. You know, there's always compliments about her. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, people always say great things. And um, so sometimes you can. You like, you can just spot the talent. Mm. Um, and other times you're surprised by how consistent people are. But then also the people that are supposed to do really well fall off. And why is that mostly? Um, so what makes someone... You know, a successful entrepreneur. It's obviously yeah. a hard slog. It's and I easy. think as an entrepreneur, you always think, oh, I'm managing my own time. I can manage my own time off. Yeah. Uh, and you and you see that's just an illusion because ultimately you don't take time off yeah. because things keep happening. Yeah. Um, so what would be some of the characteristics that make an entrepreneur who goes on, you know, to be able to, I don't know, succeed, I guess, yeah. uh, versus the ones that drop off? Yeah, I think sometimes decision making is really important. Right. And... Um, Sometimes just making that decision quickly and fast, so right. speed. Making a decision with speed is so important. Because sometimes something comes in, you see an email, um, what should I do? It takes a week, like just boom, bang, make a decision. Mm. And sometimes it's like, you might not always make the right decision. So, But sometimes it's better to at least make a decision versus, just make a decision versus and move nothing on. at all, right? Yeah. This is what I'm doing, standing on it, yeah. let's go. Um, so decision making, I think, is important. Um, accountability is important okay. sometimes they don't have people to hold them accountable and they're not holding themselves accountable and they're just not taking action ultimately okay. uh, and then other reasons just re relate around just the ability for knowledge and information because these things are easy I mean today we spoke about in the mentoring program 20 for the month of mm. for this month what 20 things can we do every single day 20 working days this month that are lead generating and sales progressing it's easy Right, but most people were like would have no idea. Yeah, they couldn't. They were named four or five and get stuck. Right, so, um, so yeah, it's just sometimes that knowledge and having that mentor, that person that can help push you forward. Like, get a mentor. I listen, people, even if it's not me, I'm okay. <laughs> all right, but get a mentor. Get someone who's been where yeah. you want to go. Someone you like. Someone you resonate with. Someone that that either you know just gets you the result. How do you get the mentor? Do you know what? It's a great question. And here's the thing, right? You don't have to have one. But how do you even get one? <laughs> so most people will start off following someone they like on social right. media. Yeah. They'll follow someone they like. 
And they'll follow multiple people that they like. And they'll stop there. Right. Whereas that person has a book. Mm-hmm. So buy the book. And something that um, uh, Billy Jean, I don't know if you know Billy Jean, is a marketing guy, guru in America. No. Went to a conference, he was there and he said... I thought you meant the tennis player. He said, no, I mean, well, <laughs> well, he said, stop buying books and hire the author. Right? Oh, interesting. And I was like, oh, I like that mm. one. Right? So, yes, I, I still say buy the book, right? Mm-hmm. But now what's the next step? You like that person, you bought that person's book, mm. you enjoyed the book. Are they available to hire? Most likely, most of them, yes. Some of them, no, of course. You mean to hire as to pay them to be your Let's mentor? Or, yeah. yeah, okay. Pay them to be your mentor. Mm-hmm. Um, so, and there's other routes. People just ask the question. So people are going to be in your industry who can help you. Say, I would love to pick your brains over a coffee. Would this be something you're open to? Mm-hmm. If you ask enough people, you know, someone's going to say yes. Yeah. Or they'll say, no, but you can do this. Right. So right. it's all about being proactive and reaching out to people yeah. that... They're not going to fall on your lap. Yeah. Right? <laughs> the ads might stalk you, right? So the ads might stalk you and our ads might stalk you. That's fine. But yeah. you still got to engage in like, you know, sometimes, like you say, you got to pay to play. Mm. We find that uh, the ones who pay yeah. the money are much more serious. First of all, they're more likely to attend. Yeah, you're invested, you're I invested. guess, already. Even if it's one pound. Mm. You'll see many people saying webinars now, one pound. Why? Because they don't want all you, everybody, that no. every Tom, Dick and Harry that just registers for 30 webinars and doesn't attend any of them, right? But now you've paid, you're going to show up. Yeah, that's it. Right? So, um, so yeah, that's what I was, that's what I was saying. Okay, and whilst we're talking about books, tell us about your books. Yeah, so three books uh, with the two largest publishers in the world. One's the Sunday Times bestseller. Love um, the journey started with Self Made. Um, and Self Made is about starting, growing, scaling and exiting your business. Um, really, really cool book. Our first book, and I remember going through this journey of pitching this book to publishers. Yeah, and they're like, "No, no, <laughs> no, no, it's not going to work. No, we don't like it, or whatever it may be." Mm. In fact, they were some of them were saying they're going to charge us. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, to write the hybrid publishers. So I was like, yeah. Okay, cool. Mm-hmm. Found, and then we it did what we did and got three offers, and then um, wrote this book, and it did phenomenally well. Very really good. And then. We wrote the second book, um, the Business Survival Kit. That was during COVID. It was a quite a uh, about what happens when things go wrong. Right. Okay. Stress, anxiety, managing stakeholder relationships, like how, all these types of things that people don't talk about. Yeah, that's it. When you're partners in a business, how does that dynamic work? So I wrote about that, which was really cool. So very practical. Yeah, and that book did however many thousand in the first week, and was nice. a Sunday Times bestseller. Very good. And then we've got the last but not least, <laughs> Rich Forever. Um, uh, what they didn't teach about money and finance in school. Okay. And that is what it says it is. It's like, what people, we don't, are not taught much about money. That is Nothing. true, actually. Money and finance mm, in school. Very true. We're taught to go through the journey and become uh, good employees. That's it. But true. even then, even if you're a, an employee, how do you manage your money? Mm. What about life insurance? What about health insurance? What about savings? What about all these things? Yeah. That was the last book. And um and we're writing another two more. And uh how many hours in a day do you have, Byron? Yeah, right. <laughs> I think you need to share that yeah. secret as well. <laughs> I've already been paid to write one more. Okay, perfect. So the last Very book nice. deal was a two book deal. Right, okay. So but then we have another book that because they've basically <laughs> self made. They like it's done so well, we want to do a second edition with updates. Right. Okay. I didn't even know that existed. Yeah, yeah. So they're going to pay us <laughs> to write an, nice. the same book just to change 30% of the book or update it. Yeah. So that's why it's two book deal. All oh, right. Okay. And then I'm actually, two days ago, I actually just pitched another book because I want Bianca to write a personal branding book. Nice. So I just pitched that uh, to, to one person to start with. So we're going to do that book. And there of the the, the the conversation that it should be both of us. Right. So we'll do that book. And then I've got another book <laughs> that uh, I'm writing. And then I think that's it. I think I'm done. Yeah, because it's not that easy just to write a book. It takes a while. Yeah, that's <laughs> two chapters a month. Or, yeah, that's how we kind of do it. Okay. Yeah. Right. One chapter. And it's easier for us because it's two of us. So what do you write? Half each? or One, one you... chapter each. One chapter each. Okay. So we say who has the skill right, for this okay. chapter. You write that chapter, I'll add to it when you've written yeah, it. Okay. So then we do, oh, nice do our bit and then it just, it, 
And that way, there's only six chapters. That way, it's only six Yeah, months. that's it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it takes one month to write a chapter. All for your sure. thoughts yeah, and all this. Sure. You know what? Research. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It was a little bit longer, but I did it myself. Yeah, it's not easy. It's because it's just you, right? Yeah. It was just me, yeah. Well, it's four months at least. So, yeah, yeah. You know, it was a little bit less, but I was very motivated. So I don't, I don't even know how anymore. So. Yeah. <laughs> but when you easy. want it, you do it, right? Well, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. So, really good. Yeah. Um, a lot of advice. Yeah. Um, can we finish on a nice, positive, upbeat tone for our entrepreneurs who are watching this? How to get it done? Yeah, talk to me. What's the question? Yeah. So just um, some takeaways for, for our budding entrepreneurs. Okay, let's go with this. Or maybe how to manage their personal life and entrepreneurial uh, life. That's also a challenge. Life, life, life. What are my, what my key takeaways? My some key, key takeaways. Like three ta or two takeaways for um for our viewers and listeners. Yeah. So I always say, look, this may be your first business, but it's not going to be your last business. Yeah. Okay. So That's a lot of entrepreneurs yeah. come in and they're like, like this may just start. Yeah. You're going to learn so much yeah. and they're transferable skills. Okay. So fail fast and fail cheap. Is number two as the f the second point because sometimes people want to spend so much money on this and that. Just get it done because it's not going to work mm. always right the first time. And you learn so much as you go through these challenges. You learn, don't do it that way again. Don't do it that way. And if you're not spending and hemorrhaging money, mm. fantastic. Get a mentor, number three, easy one. Just because they're going to see those blind spots and they've been where you want to go already. Yeah. So don't do that in that way because it costs too much and doesn't give you the results that you want. Okay? Simple as that. Number four, just get started take action yeah because the longer you wait there's a there was a a, a principle the diminishing law of intent okay? okay it says that the longer you take to do something the less likely you are to actually do it right all right um, so just get it done <laughs> get it started and get going Yes. I think Dr. Byron Cole, thank you so much for being my thank guest today. Thank you for today. having me. Thank you so much. <laughs>